In this lesson, we'll learn a technique for transferring animation in Maya. We actually have quite a few ways we can transfer animation. Of course, we can do it the hard way and just copy and paste our animations. We can go ahead and go through every single control, copy and paste that might take a while for a character, right? There's also Atom underneath the Animate menu. And feel free to do a search on our site for Atom because it's a really cool tool and you can use that to again quickly transfer animation. Now what we're going to do is take a different approach. We'll go ahead and work with just a few character sets and the tracks editor and we'll learn how well this works. So right now we're dealing with a rig that is very similar to the other. The naming convention on this rig is a bit different from the other in that we have a unique prefix but we'll see that this really doesn't matter with the approach we're taking. And then later I'll tell you about a few courses you can take a look at that will also help you to transfer animation. All right, so let's say we go ahead and get started. We'll first start by creating a character set that will hold all of the channels that we would like to, to save and our animation clip will eventually create so that we can go ahead and add it back to our motionless character. If we were to hit play, you could see Rexy's dancing, but his friend is not in the dancing mood. So we just want to make sure that he's dancing along. All right, so let's say we go ahead and get started. Now, if you've gone through the Quick Start to Rigging Volume 3 series, you know that we use a similar naming convention for our control objects. That, that naming convention has a prefix of anim. So let's go ahead and search for all of those controls with this prefix. We can use our Select by Name field on our status bar to do this quickly. So let's go ahead and make sure it's set to Select by Name. I'm just left clicking and and holding that down on the drop down menu just to make sure again it's set to Select by Name. And now we'll go ahead and type in Anim Asterix to do a wildcard search and then 01. So now when we hit Enter, Mai's going to go through and select all of the objects that have that naming convention. All right, sweet. So all of those controls have been selected. Here are all of our keys. Let's go ahead and create our character set now. Underneath the character menu, we would choose create character set. We'll go to our options and I'll reset the settings. Let's go ahead and name this CS for character set underscore Rexy01. Let's make sure we choose all keyable to make sure all keyable channels get saved in this character set. All right, sweet. So we're now ready to click on Create and take a look. All of our channels have now been tied down to the character set. You can see it's automatically loaded in. If you need to load in your character set, you can go to the character menu at the bottom here and select it from here. Or you can go to Character, Set Current Character Set and grab it here. If we were to go to our outliner, let's go ahead and take a look. You'll notice that when we expand our character set, we can get to all of its channels. All right, sweet. So everything looks good. Here we have a few channels from the global control, and that hasn't been animated, so we're good to go, but everything else you can see has a keyframe. All right, sweet. So I'll now go ahead and close out of the outliner. I'd li also like to point out that you can work with sub character sets, and this is great because we can store them inside of character sets and create various levels of character sets this way. And then we can go ahead and let's say create a sub character set for just the upper body and lower body. And then when we start to mix and match clips in our tracks editor, we can offset the upper body from the lower body quickly this way. So we can animate non destructively with these clips and non linearly as well. So we're going to take a look at how to create an animation clip soon because we'll need one. But if you'd like to create a sub character set, it's really simple. You simply go ahead and grab the object or objects that you would like to add to your sub character set. You'd make sure your character set is active. And then you can head over to character, create sub character set, go to the options. Let's go ahead and reset the settings. Again, I like to work with all keyable or if there are certain channels that you'd like to grab, you can go ahead and use from channel box. Let's go ahead and choose all keyable. And I'll go ahead and name this, let's say, SCS for sub character set underscore upper body just to demonstrate this because we'll be removing this. I'll go to now choose create and there we have it. 
Now you can see it's not automatically loaded in, but if we were to go to our drop down and choose Rexy, here it is, the sub character set. So we can go ahead and select that now to start keyframing on the sub character set. Also, of course, we can access it by going to set current character sets. There's Rexy and there's our sub character set. If we were to go ahead and take a look at our outliner quickly, I'll go ahead and show you that now all of those channels from our center of gravity are stored in that sub character set. So I'll go ahead and scroll down underneath the character set to get to the sub character set and here are those channels. Alright, sweet. Let's say we go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and add these to the main character set and I'll go ahead and remove the sub character set since we don't need that. So I'll go ahead and simply go ahead and highlight the channels that we would like to add to our character set and then I'll make sure the character set is active and we'll choose character add to character set. Now you can see that they're no longer a part of our sub character set. I'll now go ahead and take the subset and just delete that and it's gone. All right, fantastic. So it's now time to just go in and create an animation clip from our character set. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll head over to Window, Animation Editors, and we'll find the Tracks Editor. All right, sweet. Now, what's nice is that if we were to go to List, you can see that Auto Load Selected Characters is automatically on. That'll help us save time loading in our characters. Now, if you notice that this is off and your character set has not loaded in, all you need to do is go back to List and choose Load Selected Characters. And whatever is selected here is going to get loaded in. But chances are you're just going to stick with this first option. Let's make sure auto is on so we can automatically load in those characters. All right, sweet. Let's go ahead and create our animation clip now. So once this character set is active, we can now go to Create Animation Clip Options. Let's now go ahead and reset our settings. We'll name this Rexy underscore idle. So that's descriptive enough. Let's make sure our time range is set to animation curves so we can be assured that all of the animation will get saved into this clip so we can transfer it to this character here. All right, sweet. I also like to make sure offset is set to absolute. This will assure that the animation that we created and nothing more will be added when we start to work with this clip. If we use relative, we run the risk of Maya going in and kind of changing those values a bit. It's just a way of kind of offsetting the animation a bit just so it looks a bit different. But again, you'll stick with absolute more often than not because this is your exact animation and nothing more. We also have a few sub character set options. We can go ahead and include our sub character sets in this clip if we'd like. And then we can choose to place our clip in the tracks editor as well as the visor window. If you'd like to learn more about this, feel free to take a look at our course on the Tracks Editor. All right, sweet. So we have everything we need. Let's say we go ahead and choose Create Clip, and there we have it. So watch this. The animation is going to stop after the end, which is frame 33. So after frame 33, we're no longer going to see any animation. We can navigate inside of the Tracks Editor, by the way, using our same navigation tools in our viewport. So I'm holding down alt and middle mouse button dragging to pen and then we can zoom in and out of our clip by holding down alt and dragging with the right mouse button all right sweet so it's now time to go ahead and export this clip let's go ahead and select it and we'll choose file export animation clip that will bring us to our clips directory so that's where you'll find this clip in your project from here let's go ahead and name this that's going to be Rexy underscore idle clip. Wonderful. So we can now go ahead and save this out. All right, fantastic. Now watch this. If you want to get back to your keyframes, you'll need to do something kind of special here with this clip because if we were to just go ahead and delete it, take a look, the animation is gone. Not cool. So let's go ahead and press the Z key to bring that clip back. So if you want to get back to your animation, all you need to do is right click on the clip and choose activate keys. So once we do that, you can see that they have been extracted out of the clip and brought back to our timeline. So here's the cool part. We no longer need this clip. You can see how it's now purple, meaning that it's deactivated, and we can go ahead and delete it. All right, fantastic.
take a look, we're brought back to our idle animation. You can see Rexy is now moving again. All right, sweet. It's now time to go ahead and finish up by transferring the animation over to our new character here. And this is really simple to do. Now, the difference between this rig and that rig is that this uses a prefix of green underscore anim. So let's go ahead and search for that. At the top, in our select by name field, we'll type in capital G for green, and then underscore anim asterisk zero 01, and now we can hit enter. All right, sweet. So with all of these controls selected, we can now go to character, create character set, go to the options. Let's go ahead and name this CS underscore green underscore Rexy 01. And now we can choose create character set. Fantastic. So if we were to go back to the tracks editor, we should notice that this new character set is loaded in. So all we need to do now is go to file, import animation clip to characters. If we were to go to the options, you can also choose the visor and tracks editor or just the visor so just to kind of show you this if you're not familiar with the visor I'll just go to general editors and grab the visor give it a quick second to load in and take a look we actually have a section for our clips here so if we're dealing with poses we'd find them here but here's where we would access our clips that we can go ahead and just import in we could just go to file and import in what we need and it'll be added in the right section but we don't need this in this case all right, so I'll now go ahead and make sure that we click on Import Clip. And then we'll go ahead and choose Rexy Idle Clip. Let's go ahead and choose Open. All right, sweet. By the way, if we were to go back to the visor now, just want to show you this just to make it clear. You'll see that if we were to go to our clip option, there is our clip. So we've imported it in successfully. All right, fantastic. So watch this. Our new Rexy is now moving. But here's the exciting part. All we need to do now is go ahead and make sure we activate our keys. So let's right click on our clip and choose Activate Keys. And now we can go ahead and delete this clip and watch. You'll see that in no time at all, the animation has been transferred. Now here's something even more exciting. Watch this. Let's go ahead and adjust our range so we can grab a few of our keys. Let's say all of our keys here in the cycle range. We'll hold down Shift and we'll go ahead and just drag with our left mouse button to highlight these keys. Now let's go ahead and drag in the center of our selection so we can go ahead and offset our timing. And now watch this. Now we have caused the animation to look more natural because the characters are moving at a slightly different beat. If they were moving at the same time that would be twinning and that tends to destroy our performances because it's not realistic. But now we've made sure that that does not happen we can now double click on our range slider and take a look at what we've done in no time at all in this lesson. So we've managed to go ahead and quickly transfer animation from one character to the next. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, feel free to take a look at our animation retargeting techniques course, as well as retargeting motion capture to custom rigs. Though we're not dealing with motion capture, you can still go ahead and use that technique to transfer animation to pretty much any rig. So you might find that to be really helpful. But again, in this lesson, we've taken a look at a technique for transferring animation with a few character sets and the tracks editor.